All right, this is the former Low End Radio Stream Encoder computer with an Intel DQ35JOE motherboard, a Core 2 Duo E8200 CPU, and various other pieces of hardware. This thing has since been retired from duty as a stream encoder and will now be used as a network attached storage appliance, at least temporarily. However, the onboard VGA is busted, and apparently so too is the PCI Express slot because I can't get a video card to work in that slot. That or this video card is junk. Really can't discount that possibility, but anyway, whatever the case may be, it doesn't seem to be working. So. We're stuck with the onboard. I have gone ahead and installed a hard drive in there. It's 500 gigabytes Western Digital, Western Digital, Seagate that I got for free from work. And what I'm gonna do, here you can see the video problems, is I'm gonna install Server 2016 on this. So, that is what we are going to do. Okay, Control Alt Delete. Three fingers salute, and the motherboard will do its weird stuff over here. Such as cycle the fans on and off repeatedly. Before it finally does come back. And we'll see if it'll actually start. I think I plugged in a mouse. Oh, it's not this computer. Uh, what I'm actually doing is I'm hitting this keyboard down here. And the system, or that keyboard is on the KVM, which is right now going to the um, server closet. I forget which machine it is. Okay, is it actually working? I think it is. So we'll let it load, and uh, we'll continue on with setup. Okay, I don't think I really finished my thought. Wow, that's very grainy on the VGA there. Um, I didn't really finish my thought on that. Uh, the KVM right now is set up to communicate with the DHCP server, and apparently it does not like it when you push random keys on the keyboard. So, there's the explanation for what's going on. I'm still a little annoyed at that, uh, video card doesn't seem to be working. Might just leave it in there anyway. And I gotta put in a product key. That's really annoying. Okay. So, we got past that. Still not so sure if it's gonna activate. I do want the desktop experience. On that one. So we'll go for that. I very definitely read that license agreement carefully. It's a custom install. And whatever's on this drive is useless to me, so we'll just get rid of all of it. And install to the unallocated space. And we will wait for it to start working. Okay, we're now getting devices ready. And moving along nicely. I wonder if the video driver will actually work considering it's onboard Intel video. I'm not going to keep my hopes up. I also made note of the fact that the hard drive LED on the front is on solid, and also my power LED seems to be dead. Probably fix it, but whatever. Okay. Yes. Configure this local server. That's what we'll do first. We'll change the name. That's what we need. It's NAS 8. Or, I'm sorry. Is it 8? No, this is 7. And we'll have to reboot. I'll do that in a minute. After I finished dealing with all this, remove desktop. Should be allowed. Should I just set to allow? Okay, whatever. 
everything there should be okay. It's got 4 gigs of RAM. Probably should give it a little more than that. Do I have the option? Not really, no. It is activated, apparently. Oops. Cancel. The time zone is wrong. Yeah, that's more like it. I.e. whatever feedback and diagnostics are going to change that. Do not ask me for feedback. I'm basic. I should just set it to nothing. There's probably a way to do that. And it's downloading and installing updates. Eh, whatever. Leave it alone. I'll let it install its updates and then we can reboot the system and set up the file sharing. Okay, the hardware configuration is done. This is really starting to turn into something rather impressive. So we'll power it up. And we can just wait for it to turn on, and then we can configure server roles. I will be right back, thanks to the magic of video editing. Alright, here we are, remotely connected to the machine. Just waiting for it to slowly start up. And the server manager should come up next. Once the server manager is up, we can add our roles. I did try on the other machine to set up the uh, server group and whatever, but that really didn't work that well. So, configure the local server. We'll just go ahead and we'll check it. I don't think there's anything to configure, though. And it'll then stop responding. Here we go. Slowly. Really should have 8 gigs of RAM in this thing, but that's the way it is. Download updates only, blah blah blah. Everything should be okay, it's an E8200. But yes, everything should be good to go. File and storage services. Anyway, so we'll add roles and features. Role based or feature based. It's the only server option we have. And let's see, what do we need? It's a file server. We'll go for the data deduplication as well. But I think that's really it. I might go for that. And everything else we shouldn't need. So, feature wise, uh, let's see if I can remember. Yeah, I don't need that. I don't need a failover cluster. I don't remember what all I had on the other one. I don't think there's anything else. Don't need a bandwidth limit, because I'm the only one that's using the server anyway. So, I think that's it. We don't need anything else. And we'll go ahead and we'll install all that. And wait for it! Alright, success has been had. So we should be able to go over here. Volumes. All of that should be good to go. Go over to shares. And we'll make a new share here. Access based enumeration. Sure, that might actually be a good idea. Just in case I do things with this later on. Branch cache, don't really need that. Permissions. Uh, 
it should be good to go. If not, I'll customize it later. Go ahead and create, and there we go. So now there should be a share. So we'll try and access it. Okay, there is our share. So we can map it. Don't want it to be Z. <laughs> We're running out of drive letters. Go ahead and we'll hit finish. So there it is. And then what we can do is I think it's on here. Yeah, this right here. All of these files. I'm gonna just copy them just in case something happens. And we'll paste them over here. And we'll see how long that'll take. So there's a lot of files in that folder. You need permission. Okay, give me a minute. Yeah, it's actually really kind of depressingly slow. But I think the reason why is because it's a lot of small files. And for whatever reason, I know that Windows, with a lot of small files open, or transferring a lot of small files is really slow. So, yeah, that's probably more like what it should be right there.